What's up guys, we are back with another Super 7 Ultimates review, taking a look at the latest wave of Transformers. So that is Transformers Wave 3, and we're taking a look at all of them in one go because, well, there's a lot of stuff to review before the end of the year, and I'm not going to get it done if I'm doing a, an Ultimates figure every day. So we're going to do all four figures in one go. So we've got a pretty weird mix this time. Well, as usual, I suppose. We've got Alligatacon, which is definitely weird. We've got Tarn, which is one I didn't expect Super 7 to even tackle remotely soon. We've got one of my personal favorites, just of all time in general, G2 Megatron. And then we've also got Rekgar, but I wanted to showcase the slipcovers because these guys are still coming with slipcovers, and I do really, really like the Transformer slipcovers. You've got that, you know, sort of graph motif that wraps around it. You've got the line art that's done up in the foil and everything, and then you've got the foil embossed uh, logo on the back for whatever faction they are. Of course, you know, pop that slip cover off, and then you've got your figure there in the big window. You've got a purple box or a red box, depending on their faction. All the accessories, you got your logo, you got your names, all kinds of foil embossing. And then the back, as usual, gives us that sort of power ranking and a little bit more of that line artwork for whichever figure is in that box. So, yeah, let's do it. Let's pull them out and take a look. So we're going to start with Rekgar as we run through this wave of Transformers. This is a lot of weird stuff, this particular wave. You know, we've got a G2 variant, we've got an alligator, we've got one of the junk bots, things like that. There's a lot of goofy stuff in this wave, and I'm pretty excited about a lot of this stuff. I'm really curious to see if there's been any improvements in articulation across the board, and I, I definitely think there is some with Rekgar in particular. He's not perfect, but he does, he does sort of fix some of the problems that I've had across the board with some Transformers. Uh, that's not to say that that's the entire wave, but it's nice to see some of this stuff happen. So uh, let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. We've got a head that is unfortunately, as I say, he fixes some of my articulation uh, woes. The head is probably the most locked down head I have ever encountered. It really can't do anything. Uh, it cannot go up and down. I mean, this doesn't count. That's not anything. It can't, it can't tilt side to side. It cannot swivel either because of this thing on his back. The head hits it, so he can't move his head. The arms, however, go out, and I'm really happy with this just by virtue of the fact that it works. That's good. He's kind of tight, but it's it's squeaky. It's kind of tight, but it doesn't really impede articulation. Like I haven't I haven't worried about him. You can swivel those arms. We've got 90 degree elbows. There is a swivel at the elbow, which is basically your bicep swivel. And then you've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. I'm finding these these hands to be pretty difficult to actually move. They also have super, super sharp spikes on the top of them, uh, which make things a little difficult. Actually, watch out for the spikes in general because they are very rigid plastic and they are very sharp. So just pay attention to that. The crunch that he has, while minimal, does actually work. So there is a little bit of a crunch. This doodad pops out and I don't remember why. You've got swivel at the waist. The pouches do hinge. So this allows the legs to actually move a little bit. I will say be cautious here because this is like a diaper. It's a soft plastic, so if you do something crazy with it and it sits there for too long, it might warp. But the pouches do move. I'm happy to see that because that was something that I had a concern with on a couple of the Wave 2 figures. Legs don't kick forward too far, though, because of the same problem with the diaper, though. So you've got, you've got about that. It's okay. You can get him into a walking pose, okay. Backwards a little bit. You've got a thigh twist. Knees, surprisingly, full 90 degrees. I do like that happy with that. There is no twist though because of how they're constructed. And then at the ankles, he does have a little bit of hinge. It's okay. And they're not so close to the like the outline of the boot here that they get in the way, so that's okay. There is a slight bit of rock, but it's basically non-existent, which is to be expected. That's pretty normal with Transformers because of this sort of encapsulated design down here. So he does move fairly well. You know, there are some concerns specifically with range at the hips, but I do like the fact that they were able to get this taken care of because that did annoy me with some figures in Wave 2. And then the head is unfortunately locked down, but the arms and even this at the torso, I know it's not, not a lot, but for a figure that is constructed this way, I feel like that's pretty decent uh, just to be able to get him to move at least a little bit there. Now, as far as the overall look and feel on Rekgar, though, I'm pretty happy with him. I do really like the way this guy looks just in a general sense. The weirdness, the very cobbled together nature of his look, and then his colors, too. He's he's kind of all over the place. Oranges, yellows, whites, browns, reds. Uh, there is a lot going on with this guy. He does have quite a bit of paint on him as well, uh, specifically for an Ultimates. You know, sometimes that's not the biggest thing that you get is a lot of paint, but there is a decent amount on him. Uh, not much of this is actually cast. Like, you know, this color right here is. 
You've got these parts are painted. Uh, all of these little accents are painted as well, though. The spikes are painted, things like that. And I do think he looks uh, pretty solid. You've got the, you know, the, the chest turrets there, which are really nice. He's got his beard and his mustache. The face is pretty decent. That might be the one area where I am not as excited. Something about the face does leave me a little bit uh, lacking, I suppose, but overall I think they've got it pretty well. And there is a decent amount of sculpted detail throughout to kind of give him that sort of greebling nature. So you've got all this line work, all these little pits and uh, the little trenches that run through. He's got this piece on his back, which does have a decent amount of paint on it also, and it's very clean too. Very clean and crisp. No no fuzzy lines uh, on all of that work there, and that yellow is very consistent throughout, which is usually a tough color to get, especially when the yellow is painted, because yellow tends to thin out. Uh, so that does look pretty nice as well. And overall, I'm happy with his sizing. He's not super huge compared to some other Ultimates Transformers, uh, he's, but, he, but he's also not scrawny either. I will again stress the fact that you need to watch out for these spikes, not just because they are rigid plastic and they could break, but because you are going to hurt yourself uh, if you're not careful. They are like they're not super, super sharp, but they are in no way rounded either. So watch out, especially the ones on the hands. Like these are even worse. Uh, they are very sharp and it does make swapping those hands out a little bit of a pain. But overall, I'm really happy with the way he looks. I think he's very, very consistent throughout. Happy with the size, happy with the sculpt, and the paint in general is really clean and there's honestly quite a bit of it compared to a lot of other figures. Now, as far as accessories goes, Rekgar has a pretty decent spread here, and there's there's actually a lot of varied things with this figure, the first of which is an alternate head sculpt, which absolutely transforms, no pun intended, the look of the figure, because this is the G1 toy head, which is, I mean, it's just so different from the actual movie. I'd honestly forgotten what this thing looked like. I don't know the last time I even saw or looked at a G1 Rekgar figure to remember what this head looked like. It's weird. It's big and goofy and boxy. And again, very, very different from the film. Obviously, there's no mustache, no beard, none of that stuff. He does come with some extra hands. So in the box, you've got some fists. We've got a set of gripping hands. These are vertically hinged. You've got a set of vertically hinged trigger finger hands, although he doesn't include any guns that actually have noticeable triggers. You have a single right grasping hand, and then you've got a single left uh, peace sign hand, which I actually really like this one. One thing I'm going to note is with these hands, they are super, super tough. They're very, very rigid, and as a result, it's really difficult to get just about anything, specifically uh, specifically the gun, into his hand among some of the other stuff. So, you know, watch out. You may want to try to heat those up. He does include his very signature tire shields. So you've got the one that goes on the left knee and the one that goes on the left elbow. These are Really nice, very nicely sized, good paint, nice sculpt. The one thing I'm going to point out again, though, is just like with the rest of the points on this figure, these things might be some of the sharpest toy pieces I have ever gotten. They are incredibly pointy, so watch out. They are, they're not friendly to your hands by any means. And then we get a bunch of weapons and a bunch of other kind of goofy stuff, too. So we get, we get a toy gun. So this is a toy, a G1 toy gun, uh, just flat gray plastic. This thing it's really, really hard. Like, look at this. There's, there's just no way this is going to go into this hand without some force or heat. It's just not going to fit in there. You get the toy, uh, the toy version of the axe, which is again just the gray. This fits in the hands a little bit better. You get the animation colors axe, which I do really like this one. I don't, I don't intend to use the toy stuff too much. This is going to be my preferred weapon for him. It goes with the tire shields really well, also. And then he includes some goofy stuff on top of that. So he includes a couple uh, Energon goodies, the Energon sticks. These are just pink rectangles. These are, again, very difficult to get in the hands. You get the, I guess that's what this is, the lotion bottle. So like when they're waxing stuff up in the, in the movie and you get the waxing cloth to go along with it, like what they use when they're sh shining up Ultra Magnus. So you got that, like this is just a piece of fabric. And then my favorite accessory that he comes with is the mini handheld TV that actually does have a shot from uh, like what's on the TV in the movie. So this is really cool. Uh, and of course, very, very movie specific. I, in I intend to display him with this, I think, because it's a, it's a fun, different kind of accessory that has a nice little callback to the film. So he does come with like a pretty solid spread. There's a lot of varied accessories here. The one big thing to take into consideration though is that trying to use some of these weapons, these hands are not very forgiving. 
Next up, we have G2 Megatron, and this is my most anticipated figure in this wave. And for once, when it comes to Transformers, it's because of actual nostalgia I have for the toy. I've said it a number of times in these reviews that I've been a fan of Transformers from the cartoon to the comics to the toys for years. Like, it's, it's never been a huge thing for me, but it's something that I've always enjoyed. I have specific nostalgic ties to this specific version of Megatron. I can remember getting him for Christmas, I can remember playing with this guy, and I always have enjoyed him as a green and purple tank more than a gun. I don't know if, if that's sacrilegious or not to actual Transformers diehard collectors, but this has been my preferred Megatron for just the longest time. So I'm really happy that we are getting him, and I'm also hoping that he's gonna, you know, kind of cleanse the palette of, of the issues I had with the G1 Megatron in the second wave of Ultimates. So let's see what he can do, see how he moves around. He's a weird figure. Uh, there is an odd design here, but I'm, I'm, I'm digging it so far. So we've got a head that can look up a little bit and he can look down slightly. This, I'm not too surprised there because of just what's in the way. Don't no tilt, you've got rotation. Arms go out at the shoulders only that far. They swivel. You've got single jointed swiveling elbows, better than 90 degrees a little bit, not much. You've got hinges, you've got rotation at the wrist. We do have a crunch, which surprisingly works well. It's not perfect because of, well, just look at it, but it does work. You've got a swivel. Legs can actually move this time around, so I'm happy with that. They go out about yay far, not perfect again. They can't kick forward too far, and they can't kick backwards too far. You've got a thigh twist. We've got single jointed knee, about 90 degrees right there. Actually, that's, that's 90. So you've got that, and then you've got a little bit of hinge, a little bit of hinge. It's kind of unnecessary to have this down there, actually. Uh, he, he has some articulation. Like, I'm not too surprised with what he can and can't do here. He seems to be limited kind of like G1 Megatron is, but maybe not exactly, or not as much. I had a lot of issues with that Megatron uh, when it comes to how he moves and some of the odd design choices. Just the simple fact that his legs can go out this time around make it a lot better for me. I do find the crunch to be pretty decent. And then the elbows do have really nice range. The big, the big downer for me is this. Like, his arms can go out still okay. Okay, but I wish they could go out a little bit further. However, they would have to have cut into that sculpt on the tank, and I don't think I would have liked that. So I feel like this is probably the, the lesser of two evils. So he doesn't move perfectly, but he still moves pretty decently. Now the visuals are obviously going to be my main focus here because while I wanted him to move better than G1 Megatron, and he does a little bit in some ways, it's all about the visuals. And I think this is an infinitely cooler looking figure than that first Megatron. Of course, that's, that's a personal thing. I like regular Megatron, but I prefer this one, and there's there's a lot of nostalgic reasons for it, but there's also the color aspect. I think he's just a more eye-catching, weird-looking figure, and when it comes to Ultimates, that's, that's a big thing for me. I like these big, crazy-looking figures, and this time around, Megatron has tank parts, so he's got big tank legs, and he's got this big tank hanging off of his chest. You know, he's got tank treads hanging all over the place. You've got this purple, you've got this green, you've got some of these red-orangey kind of accent colors. You've still got the classic gray Megatron colors, but they're just, you know, not the focus here. Uh, you've got the gray torso, the gray legs, gray feet, gray hands, gray head still, but everything about him just draws you to the torso. These big monster shoulder pads, all of this purple up here, all of that's really fantastic. I'm happy with that. The paint on him uh, is pretty clean and crisp. Like it's, it's just sort of camo-y kind of colors, obviously, or or color scheme, I should say. But it does look good, and it's well placed. It doesn't overtake the green, and it's very, very crisp also. So there's no fuzzy line work or anything like that. No bleeding. It seems uh, everything seems to be right where it should be. So I'm, especially in like some of these like lines and trenches, I was kind of worried that the paint was going to kind of go all over the place and it very much didn't. It's, it's very nice, very concise, and it looks very impactful on this figure. He's big, he's beefy, he's really bulky. And of course that makes a lot of sense. Like he's definitely, you know, thick from front to back, but he's got these big broad shoulders. He's got this huge chest. And then he's even got, you know, of course these bigger, very, you know, uh, sort of like, rhombus style looking uh, shoulder pads up there that add some height to him. They, they beef him up a little bit. They make him wider. And he looks like he's, he, he means so much more business as a tank to me than as 
a gun. So I really like that. You know, again, there's a lot of personal preference that I'm throwing into this one, but I do think the sculpt, the paint, the size, all of it is really, really well done on this figure. Even the head sculpt, I'm very happy with it. It's still the most classic Megatron thing on this guy, but I think the head sculpt looks really good. Uh, the the two-tone colors up there is nice. The paint for the eyes is pretty clean and crisp, but I'm not going to get over just the fact that we've got this bright green purple tank Megatron. I'm so happy with the way it turned out. The treads look good. The greebling details look good. Sizing is nice. It's a really, really solid figure, and he's definitely going to draw your attention on the shelf because of how bright and vibrant he is compared to some of the other figures we've gotten thus far. Now, as far as accessories goes, this figure in particular for this wave really seems to get the lion's share. Megatron has a lot of in general, just really good stuff, and a lot of it, too. So to start with, we do get some extra head sculpts, so he gets a comic-inspired head, which might be my favorite of the bunch. You got that screaming blue head sculpt, and then you also get a slightly purpley color head sculpt that's more G1-inspired, which, honestly, I might prefer this one to the ones the heads on the actual G1 figure come with, so you do have some options there. We, of course, get some extra hands. He's got fists on him in the box. You get three extra sets, so you get a set of trigger finger hands, you get a set of gripping hands, and you get a set of grasping, style posy, gesturing kind of hands. And then he comes with just an arsenal of accessories. So to start with, we do get a G2-inspired ion cannon that goes on his arm. Now, one oddity about this one is that in the solicitations, this was actually shown on his shoulder. It does not fit there. It doesn't belong there anyway, but it doesn't fit there. So he gets the quote-unquote big stick gun that goes up on his shoulder. I love this. This is, of course, classic G2 Megatron gun. Big old monster thing. It does fit in there pretty nicely. It stays quite well. I've had no issues with it. It's got some good paint on it uh, for that green. Again, matches his camo color scheme really, really nicely. And then he gets a bunch of stuff that he can hold. So he gets a toy-inspired gun, which this was such a weird, weird-looking gun. It's just flat gray like the vintage toy. So you get that gun, and then you get a couple of comic guns. So you get one of these blasters, flat purple, and then you get this one, which is super, super metallic silver. We get the ammo belt, which I find to be kind of awkward to put on him. I don't know that I'm ever going to use this, but you've got the option. And then one of my favorite accessories that he gets is this big old monster comic sword, which is done up in the same kind of metallic silver that that gun is. So he has a lot of options. There's a lot of different accessories here. I mean, realistically, how he's set up right now is probably how I'm going to display him because I love, I love this big cannon on his shoulder and just having the ion cannon along with it really rounds him out. But he does have a lot of different options from heads to hands to weapons, no matter what you want to do with them. And now onto the weird figure in this wave. And... Let's be honest, weird figure in the entire line, maybe one of the weirdest figures in Ultimate in general, Alligator Con. And as you might have noticed, you know, if you aren't familiar with what this thing is, it's got a very familiar color palette and parts usage because this thing is the disassembled and reassembled Optimus Prime into an alligator robot. Because why the hell not, obviously? It also makes for a very, very weird figure just from a toy perspective. And it's, it's okay. Like, there's definitely a lot of limitations with the articulation on this thing. But it's it's odd, and I, I don't know. I like odd stuff. So we've got, I mean, in, in general, a very ultimate size figure. It's just, well, an alligator. So you've got a head that can swivel. This is a big ball peg, but it honestly doesn't really have a lot of, a lot of range. So up and down, and then tilt. You've got a hinge here, though. And the jaw is tinge. So you can swivel... You can do all that. Front legs will hinge outward to the side a little bit. They swivel. You've got an elbow with swivel, and then you've got a foot with, with swivel also. They're, they're decent enough. It, it can be a little difficult to get these all flat on the ground, but it, it works well enough. You've got a giant, giant ball peg here. So this thing allows it to swivel side to side and rotate. Again, though, it's an end up and down. It's still not that great, though. It doesn't really allow for a lot of functionality. He can sort of turn, and that's about it. The back legs also hinge out. They swivel. You've got a, a knee here, and then you've got a foot also. Basically the same as the front legs, just slightly more limited because they are kind of like a stocky, chunkier leg. And then the tail is kind of like what they've done with some of the Godzilla figures, is that it's just a series of ball pegs. And this is okay. It, it would be better if... 
the like the stacks from Prime were not here because they get in the way of this segment at the back and then you can swivel all around. So it moves okay. Articulation is 100% not the focus for this thing in, in any respect. It moves well enough, but it is easily one of the most restricted ultimates uh, for Transformers just by virtue of the very boxy nature of this, well, admittedly very weird figure. I would have to say the visuals, not even just for me, but maybe for the general audience, have to be the major draw for this thing because it's weird. I don't even know if this thing has ever had a toy before. I'm not familiar enough with it to know for sure. I don't think there was uh, that I can think of off the top of my head. But it's, it's obviously Optimus Prime colors. It's Optimus Prime parts remade into an alligator. And it's, it's really weird. The whole thing around this guy is like, you know, alligators that live in New York City sewers. Like, that's the whole thing around it. Uh, so it's... It's definitely just, you know, like an alligator that's made out of robo parts, which is honestly pretty cool. The colors on this thing were incredibly flat in the cartoon as well. And I mean, whether that was the goal or not, Super 7 actually did a pretty solid job of translating that here because he doesn't have tons and tons of paint on him. A lot of this guy is just cast plastic. It does have some nice size to it. It is going to be odd among your other ultimates just because of the profile. So this thing sits really, really low to the ground. So like all the other other ultimates are gonna be towering over this thing, but he's gonna be kind of like, you know, a beast pet kind of figure alongside of them. I think the head looks really good. It's very cartoony specifically with these eyes and with these teeth. You know, you've got just basic colors underneath. You've got the stacks from Prime. You've got like the windows on his belly and then all of this, you know, red, white and blue Optimus Prime kind of colors. The tail looks really good. Again, it's segmented kind of in the ways that uh, that we've been seeing with the Godzilla, the Toho figures, in, in which case they do look really good. It's functionally OK. It does get in the way of, of articulation with these stacks again, but it, it looks pretty decent. It's got some of that Optimus Griebling, uh, you know, bits and bobs detail on there. And he's just a pretty weird looking figure. Like this is definitely going to be one of those that's like, yeah, he's probably not for everybody. But if you're into the weird and the goofy when it comes to Ultimates or you just want a robot Optimus Prime alligator, this guy will probably be the figure for you. Now, as far as accessories goes, Alligatorcon has some weird stuff. This is the odd figure out from start to finish, basically, because he has goofy, goofy accessories, like really goofy stuff. And then he also has very little in terms of piece count. So to start with, he does get an extra head, but not in the way you might expect. He gets an Optimus Prime head. So this is, again, an alligator built out of the disassembled remains of Optimus Prime. So this head is floating around. This is not a head that fits on the Optimus figure, though. And it does have one of the neck posts like we got with Bludgeon in Wave 2. And it is light piped. So you can shine a light in there and the eyes will glow. Now, that said, this is a really small head. So that's why it doesn't fit with Optimus. Uh, it's not the same. It's just it's not like the, the default head that he comes with that just happens to have light piping. It's it's a different piece. It's smaller. So you do have this, you know, if you want to put it in his mouth or something goofy with it. We get one of these. We get one of the, the battle taxis that appear in the episode with Alligatacon. So this is when, like, they take over New York or whatever and they repurpose all the all the taxis. This is just a slug uh, piece. Like, there's no moving parts. The wheels don't move. It's got a decent amount of paint on it, and then it's got like that little cannon on the top, which is what was in the in the show. So you've got you've got this if you want to kind of try to set the scene a little bit. And then, well, the best and definitely the goofiest accessory this thing comes with is one of the Decepticon towers. So this is this is again from that episode where they've got a Decepticon tower, but they put Optimus's arm on it. So you've got a working Optimus Prime arm. So it can actually hinge up and down inside there. It swivels, it hinges outward. This is still one of like the early arms where the range is very limited. It's got a bicep swivel. And then you've got hands and it comes with a gun for, for the arm too. This does function with the other hands that work with the actual Optimus figure. So if you wanted to put one of the other hands on there for whatever reason, you could. And then you get this big chunk of hollow plastic for the Decepticon Tower, which looks pretty good. But again, this is like super, super weird. Again, it's like one of those things. He doesn't really have a lot of accessories that can really go with him. So they're trying to build out that that scene within this episode. And it's, it's a fun little piece. It's just, I don't know, there's no other way to say it really. It's just, it's just weird. And then rounding us out for this wave is the character of the figure that I know the least about when it comes to Transformers. We've got Tarn, and it's not that I don't know who he is, I'm familiar with him, but he's, I mean, he's the newest of the bunch, right? Because this guy, this guy is from the 2000s. 
and definitely not in the era of stuff that I was truly paying attention, because he started in the comics, if I recall, right? Someone will obviously let me know if I'm wrong. So let's see what he can do. We've got a head that can look up. He can look... He can look down decently. You got tilt, you got rotation. If anything, the head is actually pretty well articulated here. What I'm really surprised about is this. These arms, I didn't think they were gonna be able to do anything, but they've got this weird sort of hook system in here that allows the arms to shift out. You've got swivel. We've got single jointed elbows, give you full 90 with swivel. And then you've got hinges and rotation at the wrist. So arms are, I mean, arms are pretty decent. He does have a crunch and that might be the best crunch in Transformers yet. I can't think of one that's better right now. And you got your twist. Legs are where he's gonna have a problem because he's got the diaper thing going on and it does get in the way here. So he kicks out about that far. He kicks forward about that far. The only concern I have, I mean, the range is a problem to begin with, but the concern I have comes when you're leaving him in that pose. This thing will warp over time. You've got a twist up there. We've got single jointed knees that are better than 90 degrees. They offer a little bit of shimmy. The feet are pretty weird on this guy too. He's got ankle hinge down here. He does not have rocker though. There's no place for that to go, but he has toe articulation. I don't know how necessary this is, uh, but they've got it. So he, he loses the rocker, but he gains some toe action. So oh, overall, I think he moves pretty well, though the big areas that I was kind of surprised about were those shoulders and the crunch. The, the hips are definitely gonna be a concern but not the biggest concern. It's certainly not too uncommon for this particular line to have lockdown hips. If anything, the one thing he's really missing is just any way to rock those ankles. Now, visually, I'm really happy with him. He does have, he does have some articulation challenges because of this design, specifically the ankles. Like if there's one thing I wish was different on him, I wish he could rock those ankles to stand up a little bit better into some different poses. But his design makes for a pretty toyetic look, I think. And he's so, so, so different from every other figure in Transformers Ultimates. And that, I'm not sure that's mostly because of the fact that he is not a G1 character. You know, he's 20-ish years old at this point. So he's not new, but he's not old, old either. And he has that more, I don't know if modern is the way to describe it, but he does look obviously quite a bit different. He, he has more paint, he has more colors, he has more, he has more intricate design work compared to a lot of that cartoon look that we get in this line. You know, Megatron or Optimus, they are, they're very boxy, they're very flat in many ways because of the fact that they're mimicking the, mimicking the cartoon. This guy is a whole different situation. And I think Super 7 did a pretty solid job here. He does seem to integrate into the line well, but he also seems to be very different at the same time. So there's a lot about him that's just unique. He's got different colors, he's got different textures, he's got he's got a very different format to him. Uh, so, you know, you've got kind of this like tapered nature for the chest to waist ratio. He's got these huge, huge monster legs and feet. I really can't stop looking at the tank treads for the torso and the shoulder pads. They, they look so menacing and evil, specifically because they've got all this wear and tear on them too. So there's a lot of silver dry brushing all over these to make them look uh, all beaten up and worn. Even the back looks really good. He's got a nice profile front to back, side to side. I'm really happy with the way he turned out. He does, he does look a lot more menacing than essentially every other figure in this wave or this line so far. And I think that's gonna make him kind of stand out and maybe be a little bit more interesting to folks as well because he does, because of that, get more paint and seem to get a little bit more detail as well. He definitely looks busier than other figures, but not necessarily in a negative sense, just in the way that that's his design. I love the chest plate with the pink, that sort of hot pink fuchsia color up there. And then the head sculpt is just evil. He looks very gnarly. He looks like the one out of this entire line that you do not want to mess with. That very angular face plate, the red eyes, and even that pink on there, I mean, it kind of belies a very sinister looking figure. So I'm really happy with the way he turned out. He's super, super big and beefy and bulky and is gonna be quite the focal point compared to essentially every other Transformer and specifically Decepticon that we've gotten thus far. Now, as far as accessories goes, Tarn has a pretty solid spread. He is a little bit different compared to the rest of the wave because he gets a pack-in buddy, so that does change up the nature of the stuff that he gets for himself, right? Uh, so to start with, we do get an extra head sculpt. This is the, the unmasked, the face shield off head sculpt. So you've got the exposed face, you've got that pink jewel, you got a little battle damage and that sort of smarmy smile, which I, I do really like. You do also get uh, the face shield as well. It doesn't go on the face or anything like that, but you've got it if you want to have him hold it or something like that. We do get some extra hands. So he's got fists on him in the box. You get eight total hands. You get a set of gripping hands. You get a set of trigger finger hands, although this guy does not have a gun to hold. 
and you get a set of gripping, grasping, style posey kind of hands. Now, he doesn't have a gun to hold, but he does have a big old monster cannon that can go on his arm. So you pop one of these little boxes off of the wrist, and then you can put this just absolutely enormous thing on here. And I will go as far as to say that while I think this is pretty cool, I think it's just way too big at the same time. Like, it's it's huge. And it does seem to be, you know, a little tenuous when you've got it sort of hanging there like this. I don't think it's going to stay like that forever. Uh, it does sit just fine when the arm is outstretched, you know, something like this. You want to have him blasting somebody, that works just fine. But it is, it's a big old piece. It's a huge piece of plastic. So there you go. You've got that as far as weapons goes. And then he does come with nickel as well. So you've got the little pack-in buddy here. And this, honestly, this looks pretty great. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. It does have some articulation. So like the head can swivel, the arms rotate and they hinge in and out. The arms are pre-posed so there is like a bend at the elbow permanently and then you've got hinges and swivel at the wrist. And then you've got a ball peg at the waist which allows for some bob in and out and side to side and rotation. I will say this thing does have uh, maybe a little wonky when it comes to balance, especially when you put the jetpack on him. That kind of makes things uh, very back heavy, so watch when you're posing. But overall, I think it looks really good. Uh, I'll also say, you know, take caution with all of this little bits and bobs and stuff hanging off. These are really, really spindly, so you don't want to break them. But the sculpt and the paint looks great. Cute little thing for sure. And then it does come with a couple loose tools that you can put in the hands, or you can put them uh, on the little belts on those pegs right there, and you can have them hanging down like that. So this thing looks really cool. It's another nice little pack-in. I've always said... Figures that get a buddy are instantly cooler to me, and this is no exception. I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Honestly, I think Tarn is, is probably one of my favorite figures in this wave just by virtue of the fact that he has this inclusion because this, this as a pairing, is really cool to me. But Tarn does have some cool stuff otherwise. I do think the gun is neat, it's fun, it's different, it's big, but it's, it's kind of cumbersome, and I am curious to see how that works over time. But overall, pretty solid spread here. So overall, this is a really solid wave of Transformers. I'll go as far as to say that this is my favorite wave yet. They're not perfect by any means. They all still have various articulation limitations, which I suspect is going to be a thing forever just by virtue of the nature of the designs and how Super 7 is translating them into figures. That said, this is also a very different wave from the rest as well because... This is not solely focused on cartoon aesthetics. You know, we've got G2 Megatron, we've got Tarn, we've got Alligaticon, which of course is a cartoon figure, but it's a really weird, goofy thing. And then we've got a very fan favorite character in Rekgar. So there's something for everybody when it comes to this wave. If you're not into the cartoon aesthetic, there are a couple figures that fit that bill. If you want the weird, wacky stuff, you can get yourself a robot alligator. And they all come with a really solid and in many ways varied array of accessories. So that's going to do it for this look at the Super 7 Ultimates Transformers Wave 3. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.